Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. In this season of The Hustle, we're focusing in on people's personal finance questions. And today we have Diego all the way from Cape Town, and he has some really good questions lined up. Diego, what's your first question? My first question is, what are the three principles in this day and age that would guide someone to becoming financially free in an economy that's currently failing, a government corrupt, in a society that has lost its way? So that's a great question. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things to unpack there. I think, first of all, to understand that when it comes to financial freedom, the principles have been the same throughout time, irrespective of whether government's good, government's bad, whether an economy's good, economy's bad. It really comes down to, number one, financial control. You have to spend less than you earn. doesn't matter if the economy is doing well, the economy is doing bad. If you don't spend less than you earn, you're always going to be a slave to the financial system. And the only way to unslave yourself from the financial system is to use earned income to invest so that you eventually put your money to work for you so you don't have to work for money. So the first thing I would say is you've got to spend less than you earn. The second thing is, You've got to really understand capital deployment. You need to understand how to take your money and how to invest it for growth. And there's a mindset shift that needs to happen because most people, when they go to invest, they go to make money. And I always say to people, you don't go and invest to make money. You go and invest to preserve your wealth. And it's a different mindset to go into investing with. So when I look at investing, it is something you do after you've earned the money. But a lot of people are trying to make money by investing. And what you really want to do is beat inflation. Because here's the thing. If you go and take 100 Rand today and you take 100 Rand a year from now, it's going to be worth infinitely less. It's going to buy you less. So your objective is to make your money grow so that it retains its value. But really the missing link here is you've got to go earn the money first. And there's so many guys coming to the markets trying to get wealthy off the markets. And look, it does happen from time to time. But the path to financial freedom is one of consistency. Spend less than you earn and then figure out how to deploy that capital and know what you're investing in. And then I'd say probably the third most important aspect of this is really gaining emotional control. Because when I see the mistakes that people are made with money, it generally is nothing more than an, than an emotional problem. You know, people spend more than they should. Uh, people buy things that they don't need to buy. And a lot of it stems from the emotional choices we make. And this is why one of the foundations that I teach around money is really about gaining emotional control. Because once you understand your emotional triggers and why you do certain things around money, it becomes that much easier. So really, you know, you can sum up the first part of this really down to going back to basics. And it's the answer that people don't want to hear. People want to believe that there's some kind of magic answer out there. People want to believe that there's a magic pill that you can take and it's going to solve all your problems. It is about consistency. It is about slow growth. And it is about doing something persistently over time. I mean, I became financially free at the age of 31, but I took an enormous amount of sacrifice uh, on board personally for a period of like six years to get to that point. I lived way, way below what I was earning. I set aside 50, 60% of my earnings and used that money to invest and to build up other forms of income. And it requires a tremendous amount of discipline. So I think really basics and discipline is what's going to get you there. Well, I do appreciate that. Would you like me to move on to my second question? Yes, please let us know what's your second question. What would you say the three main pillars of becoming financially independent or free when starting out with nothing but a cell phone or even a laptop? The question that I'm posing is more into today's society where people don't have the resources and don't feel they have the resources to obviously go out there and do so much more. It's more of the lower to middle class who are wanting to make that jump into that next level of financial freedom. So I think the fundamental thing to remember is that people do business with people. And whilst cell phones and laptops and you know cars and all these resources make our lives a little bit easier and a little bit quicker and it allows us to expand, if you are starting with absolutely nothing, and I speak from deep personal experience here because I have been in a situation where I've been homeless. 
I've literally been right at the bottom. I know what it means to start something up with little to no resources. And the advice I give to people is figure out how to solve a problem, figure out how to add value, figure out how to go and physically present yourself and the opportunities will come. So I'll give you a classic example, right? If you have zero resources, you can find yourself a bucket and a sponge and you can go and wash cars on a weekend. There is no excuse not to get out there and to start. But the problem is human nature is we've got to get the resources first and then we can actually provide the service. I've got a youngster who we just had on this uh, season of the podcast. He's 15, just gone on 16 years old. And he's got a high pressure cleaning business, doesn't own any equipment, doesn't have a car. He Ubers everywhere. Uh, He rents equipment when he gets jobs. And this is a classic example of using what you have as opposed to what you don't have. And this is this has been the core founding principles of every business I've ever built. We don't throw money at a problem. We say, let's figure out what the problems are. Where can we solve the problem without resourcing too much? And uh, work with what we have, not with what we don't have. So my advice to any person out there, young or old, if you are hungry for success, if you are hungry to make things happen, you just have to figure out how to use what you have. And if all you have is your physical body, then get out there and use your physical body. If you have a spade and a rake in the back garden, use that spade and a rake to clean somebody else's garden and get paid. The problem is most people, when they start a business or they start start a venture, they say, well, I have to have a laptop. I have to have a cell phone. I have to have a car. I have to have all of these things. And we put up these excuses as a convenient way to avoid the uncomfortable stuff we have to do when we're starting out. Most people who generate wealth in this world started with nothing. Most people who created something started with nothing. And the exception and what makes them different to everybody else is that they've been prepared to get off their backside and figure it out no matter what. And I've traveled into places, Diego, in Africa, where there is nothing. And you see people creating something out of nothing. They create a business out of trash. They create a business out of the trees by carving the trees into something beautiful. You know, it's amazing how resourceful human beings can be. And so I really want to encourage people not to think of the lack of resources as a stumbling block. In fact, in many instances, it is the greatest advantage you'll ever have. Because as I always say, you can give two guys a million rand. One will turn it into two, one will turn it into zero. And so it's not about having the resources. It's about understanding how to add value. And if you can figure out how to solve people's problems, and if you can figure out how to add value, you will always be successful and you will never look for money. That is really the secret to becoming financially wealthy. Awesome stuff. Well, Justin, I do appreciate that. Um, My final and last question is more of a a personal question towards you. Um, It's something that I took out extremely deeply from the movie The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. It's more to say if you were in his situation, without knowing the outcome, knowing that he was eventually going to the stock market, you know, have that, what would you do in a situation where you, you were living in a, in a homeless or you were, you were living in a shelter? I, obviously, we spoke about the fact that, you know, at one point you were in the lowest of lows. So do you mind maybe sharing with us what you did to kind of go from having absolutely nothing to at the present moment, you know, having your own podcast, you know, Money Tribe, all these successes that you are building yourself, you built for yourself. What was the key moment? What did you do to you know, to jump over. So my journey is pretty interesting because I came from a family who had nothing. I came from a a very impoverished background. By the age of 13, I'd started my first business as a means to survive rather than, you know, out of of me wanting to do it. It was out of necessity. And by the age of 20, I'd become a millionaire, which, you know, 25 years ago, there was some serious money. By the age of 22, I'd lost it all partly due to my own naive approach to business in the world and also by the fact that I got defrauded and I had a really rough run. Irrespective of what led me there, I eventually got to a point where I had nothing and I literally slept on the streets. I used to bum around from my mate's couches to you know get by for the first couple of weeks, but eventually, because I'm a proud person, I, I went and figured it out on my own. And so I, I did things that I never thought... I would ever see myself doing like, for example, you know, 
eating food out of a dumpster. I never thought that would be something in my reality. And what I realized through the process was that this was my greatest opportunity. And so I avoided things like shelters for a very specific reason, because I didn't want to be around other people who clearly had had a bad run in life, and I didn't want to take on their negative energy. So the first thing I'm going to say is if you ever find yourself in that situation, steer clear of all the negatives. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from alcohol. Stay away from smoking. Stay away from other negative people. Stay out of the shelters because that place is an environment that just breeds all the wrong stuff. The second thing I realized is that this was an opportunity to, to start again. If you find yourself in that situation, uh, you know there, there is a divine intervention waiting for you in the sense that I took a blank piece of paper. And on one side, I wrote down everything that I wanted. And on the other side, I wrote down everything that I didn't want from my old life. And there were a lot of very basic things on there. So, for example, one of the things was I never wanted to take a phone call from a customer after 8 o'clock at night. Because there were times in my previous business where I was dealing with phone calls at midnight. And so that was something for me. The other thing I wanted to make sure of is that I never worried about money again and that financial stress would never be my driving decision-making fact and that I'd make decisions outside of just purely for the sake of financial gain. And so I saw this as an opportunity to rewrite my life, and I did exactly that. So now the real question is how did I get from there to here? I figured that since I was at my lowest point, I had no other choice but to shoot for the stars because here's the thing. Being in a middle-class lifestyle often is the biggest entrapment ever because you've got the house, you've got the car, you've got food on the table, and so you take the road that is very safe. And you will continue to take the road that is very safe with very few risks along the way. I got to a point where I could risk anything, and I had nothing to lose. And so I literally sat in the offices of my ideal client for six months, and I would make sure that no matter where I was or how I was you know, down for that day, I'd made sure that I was clean. I made sure that my clothes were neat. I made sure that nobody knew that I was homeless. And I made sure that I presented myself in the position of where I wanted to be. And I sat in the reception of this potential client for six months, and they rejected me every single day, almost to the day, six months. One of the secretaries of the vice president of marketing gave me a five-minute meeting. She literally said, I'm, I'm giving you 10 minutes but you better make this work in five minutes because this is a busy man. It took me two minutes. That's all I needed. Two minutes. I walked out of there with my with a check that changed my life. I walked out of there with a business opportunity that changed my life. And that was the start of my career. And so the point I'm making is you have to be very intentional when you're in that situation about what it is that you want. And I'm glad you referred to the movie that you were talking about because that movie with Bill Smith gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. And I watched it probably about 20 times because I've been there and I know that emotion and I know the desperation and I understand what it feels like to sleep in a toilet cubicle because I've done it. And I can tell you that if that should ever fall upon you, or if you're in that situation at the moment for anybody listening, my advice is shoot for the stars. Know exactly what it is that you want. It's an opportunity to start again. The material things of this world are no longer holding you back. Your pride is no longer holding you back. It is entirely up to you to create what you want. And so take the exact thing that you want and beat down that path as if your life depended on it, because that's exactly what I did. Sitting in that business for six months in that reception, I got to know every member of staff's name. I got to know their children's names. I got to know, you know, what their fears were, what the things that drove them. And I, and I knew that company's heartbeat and their pulse better than their own management team. And that is what actually got me the contract because I demonstrated that I was so hungry for this, that I was so absolutely committed to it, that I'd given up everything to be there. And that would be my advice. Go all in. And never look back. And listen, setbacks in life are going to happen. Whether you're in the middle class, whether you're wealthy, uh, whether you're right on the bottom end of scale, setbacks are going to happen. The question is, what are you going to do? If you continue to stay down on the match, you're knocked out. But if you keep standing up, you're still in the fight. And I can give you a lot of philosophical answers here. But what I can tell you is this. In my heart of hearts, I've always believed that I'm going to create wealth. I've always believed that I'm going to create an existence for my family beyond what I had as a child growing up. And it has been my mission to measure my wealth, not in the things I have, 
but in the value I add to others. And that is at the heart of all 109 businesses that I've started in the last 25 years is to be in service of others. And being homeless is the greatest opportunity to ever experience it because you truly find out what makes you happy. You realize that the material things in this world are fleeting. That lovely car that you want, one day it's going back to the trash heap of life. That lovely piece of furniture you're so committed to buying, one day it's going back to the trash heap of life. Material things are fleeting, but we have to invest in each other. We have to invest in being a good, upstanding citizen that serves our community and our environment. And if you can do that with very little, you will be able to do a lot more of it when you have. And so I'll give you a great example of what I used to do every single day before I went into that office and begged for six months. I would go and pick up the trash around. I would, I would walk, I would be there before sunrise and I would pick up trash. I would do whatever I could to make people realize that I was committed to this journey and this process. And I also was an inward affirmation for myself to go with what little I had, just me, my hands and feet. I provided labor. And that's my advice to people. Well, I, I surely hope that you know, whoever's listening, Justin, you know, for all of us South Africans, that the words that you spoke, it's, it's a lot of affirmation for, for us to help ourselves because at the end of the day, we all want to just make our own lives better. And if we just take small steps, I, I believe that you know, we'll be able to do so much more. Absolutely correct. So if you have been enjoying this uh, season of The Hustle, please make sure that you hit that subscribe and follow button to make sure you don't miss any of the episodes that we're releasing. And of course, if you are finding value, please be sure to leave us a rating on your favorite podcasting app. And remember, hustle makes muscle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.